Welcome back, class. Walk with me, and let's get a rainbow bagel. Now, I put out a call for video topics on Instagram and Twitter, at Mr. Bet's class, and Cool Hand Luca, great handle, by the way, Cool Hand Luca said, do the Teapot Dome scandal, which is one of those things in American history that you remember because it kind of has a silly name, like uh, carpet bagging or gerrymandering or Spiro Agnew. Oh, I guess while we're at it, let me introduce my teaching assistant for the summer, Q. He sleeps a lot. Now back to the Teapot Dome scandal, which ultimately shows us that you need to be very careful with who you're hanging out with. The whole thing centers around one of our least liked presidents in history, Warren G. Harding. Now his administration might possibly be the most corrupt, which is really impressive when you consider that he died two years into it. The Harding administration does more shady deals by 9 a.m. than most people do all day. So the scandal involved oil reserves in California and in Teapot Dome, Wyoming. Named that way because of its rock formation that looks like a, a teapot, I guess. Make a pretty crappy cup of tea. Anyway, these lands were set aside to be naval oil reserves. Enter Albert Hall, Harding's Secretary of the Interior, who in 1922 convinced the Secretary of the Navy to transfer control of the lands to him, citing, dude, they're in the interior. Hall promptly leased out oil production rights to the Mammoth Oil Company, not big oil, Mammoth Oil, and Pan American. This was all done without competitive bidding that was, while not illegal, pretty much a jerk move. Now this angered a bunch of people in the Senate and an investigation into the deal ensued. At first the Senate found nothing, probably because all the key documents kept on, you know, disappearing. But then they found evidence of a hundred thousand dollar loan that went to Hall from Pan American's Edward Doheny. This broke the investigation wide open and it was later revealed that Hall received over four hundred thousand dollars in bribes from the two companies. The equivalent of over five million today. Hall was found guilty of accepting bribes from Doheny and became the first cabinet member ever to go to prison. Doheny was acquitted of giving bribes and his company, oddly enough, foreclosed on Hall's farm, citing failure to pay back that $100,000 loan. Now a major outcome of this was the establishment of Congress's ability to compel testimony. And while the scandal did hurt Harding, it didn't kill him mainly because it was years after he had already died. But it was just another scandal and possibly the most corrupt administration we had ever seen. Now probably my favorite scandal in all of this is when the Attorney General's office was involved in selling pharmacy liquor rights to bootleggers. Mind you, this is all during Prohibition. So what do you think? The Harding administration, most corrupt ever? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you get ready for August 23rd when Mr. Betts class starts the fall semester. You can follow me across social media at Mr. Best Class. Be safe. I'll see you next time. There we go. Rainbow Bagel. Mm. Mm. I imagine this is what a unicorn tastes like.